Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the MacBook Pro 13 inch that Apple just dropped a couple days ago. So this is a small refresh for the MacBook Pro 13 inch, uh, nothing crazy. I just wanna point out a few things here. If you saw our other video, I mentioned that Apple was not gonna be dropping a 14 inch MacBook Pro. A Bunch of other tech reviewers kept deceiving people, even my viewers, and people kept commenting on my videos that, hey, Apple's gonna drop a 14 inch MacBook Pro. No, they're not, not in the foreseeable future. Showed you the guys that clip of Phil Schiller saying that they're not working on one. So I'm just tired of other reviewers putting out fake information and lying to you guys. I don't like that. Trust me, if I hear about a 14 inch MacBook Pro from my sources, of course I will let you guys know, but right now it is not in the pipeline. This is the new MacBook Pro 13 inch. Anyways, with that out of the way, let me talk about the specs. So if you're looking to get a smaller MacBook Pro, the 13 inch, right now is the time to buy. Don't worry about waiting for a 14 inch whether or not that comes in the next year shouldn't matter to you if, you if you're looking for one right now. So let's take a look first at their little promo page here. $12.99 starting price up to 10th gen processor. Yeah, that's if you get the maxed out one, 32 gigs of RAM. New scissor switch keyboard, which they're getting rid of the butterfly, which is fantastic. Uh, they're touting the performance. Yes, it's a great display. Yes, it's a great product. Yes, it can do a lot of professional work in a very, very small package. So we've gotten through a lot of this marketing hype. Let's actually see and break this down by cost for you guys so you guys know which model you should be looking at because this is the part that hangs up a lot of people. You go to this website, obviously click 13 inch if you wanna see these uh, and scroll all the way down because they usually bury one down here. So I don't know why they do that, but that's the way it is. So if you guys look closely here, you'll see this is the eighth gen processor. This is the eighth gen processor. This is the 10th gen processor. And this one down here is also the 10th gen. So this one is the Mac daddy if you wanna you know, step it up a bit, but look at the pricing difference. So. $12.99 to $14.99, these are both 8th gen. Then you jump up to $1,800 for the 10th gen or up to $2,000 for the 10th gen plus some extra stuff. So let's talk about the differences because a lot of you guys might not know the difference between an 8th gen and a 10th gen processor. So the difference here is not a whole lot, actually. Uh, between the 8th gen and 10th gen, there was not a whole bunch of performance improvements overall. Battery life should be the same between both of them for the most part. If this was my money, I probably would not be going for the 10th gen i5, I'd probably stick somewhere in this lower range just because of the price cost savings. And I would put that money towards RAM. So if you are on a complete budget and you're just looking at this one right here and you're like, I want to spend the fewest amount of dollars on a brand new MacBook Pro. So let's select this cheaper one and I'll run you through what I would do if I was buying the cheapest one here. This one is 1.4 gigahertz, which is decent. It is a quad core eighth gen i5 and turbo boost up to 3.9 gigahertz. That is nothing bad at all. That is a fantastic processor. Let's look at what you're getting for the cost. So if you want to jump up to the 1.7 gigahertz i7, that's an extra 300 bucks. So you're already up to a decent chunk of change there. Now this one can only go up to 16 gigs on this model itself. So keep that in mind. 16 gigs is enough for most people, but if you're doing any type of, you know, video editing, I would automatically go up to 32. I run 32 on mine up here, as you guys can see, it's only halfway. Uh, I never even get close to using it, but it's nice to have it, especially when you're multitasking. Storage, I've got 512 in mine currently. Uh, now I have the 15 inch MacBook Pro, but next time I get one, I'm jumping straight up to the one terabyte because with my video files getting so big these days, it's just easier to work on. But that's totally up to you. If you're getting the cheapest one, 512 is probably a sweet spot right there. And that's it, so 1600 bucks. Uh, for a decent computer. RAM is just very important to me, so that's why I would upgrade that. Now, this one right here is really only more expensive because they just upgraded the storage for you, um, so just keep that in mind. However, it doesn't include the 16 gigs of RAM, so be advised of that. Now, if you jump up to the 10th gen, this one automatically comes with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 storage right off the bat. So if you had a few extra dollars to spend, you could jump up to that. And if you really wanted to go all out with the storage, this one's one terabyte. So if we select this one right here, let's just go from one extreme to the next. This is if you wanna go all out and you want the best MacBook Pro uh, for a decent amount of money. So if you wanna jump up to the i7, again, it's only 200 bucks upgrade here. Still not sure if that i7 is worth it, honestly, guys. It's really probably not for most people's needs. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM. I would love that, but spending 2,400 bucks on a 13 inch, actually come to think of it, I think I did that a couple years ago. But regardless, at least you get one terabyte of storage, which is crazy. For 2,400 bucks, this is actually something that I would be able to edit on, on the road. Like I could straight up take this with this configuration and have no issues on the road editing. Just think about what you would use it for and your use case. If you're just a student, 
Um, maybe you'll opt for something in the middle. So this one right here is a little cheaper, has the same processor, but it, this one drops it down to only 512 of storage. So if you're looking at 32 gigs of memory and 512 storage, you can get that for only 2200. This is the sweet spot, I think, for most professionals. So if you're looking for something to just take on the road as a secondary machine, but you want it to be super powerful, this is a good sweet spot. But before you go and buy one of these, think to yourself, okay, if I'm spending 1300 bucks, that's in the iPad Pro range. You could get a 13 inch or 12.9 inch, whatever, iPad Pro plus the new keyboard case for that for about 1300 bucks. So you really got to think to yourself, do I need a MacBook Pro or do I need an iPad? Am I going to be touching the display more? Do I want to draw more, more creative type stuff? If so, you might want to look at the iPad Pro. Now, if you're just a student and you're watching this for some reason, um, if you're doing something that's not particularly intensive, so maybe no video editing, no hardcore photo editing, you might want to look at the new MacBook Air, which are actually pretty dang good for the price. I should probably do a new video updated going over that because I think a lot of students are looking at the MacBook Pro here when they should be looking at the MacBook Air. So I know I'm going to get a ton of questions on this. So first of all, if you are a video editor, you're going to want RAM and storage. The processor is not going to make a huge difference on these because the graphics card that comes included is mediocre at best. I mean, it'll get the job done, but it's nothing crazy fast. So the other thing you really got to look at if you're really nerding out is that this is LPDDR3 memory and this one is LPDDR4X memory. So keep that in mind. This memory is much faster. So I think you'll have a better experience if you're a professional getting one of these more expensive models, either this one here or this one here. If you're a student and you just want something really fast, Honestly, either of these would be fine if you're just doing web browsing, schoolwork, you know, email, stuff like that. These things will blaze through that no questions asked. Hell, even the MacBook Air is fast enough for that stuff. So if you're a programmer, honestly, I would recommend this one right here uh, just because it's got a decent amount of storage, decent amount of RAM. Everything about this machine right here will do you really well. And think about it. You're getting a machine that can last you at least three to five years without issue for 1800 bucks. If you do the math on that, that's what, 360 bucks a year if you average it out for five years. That is a pretty decent price. That's like $1 a day uh, if you use your computer every day for a beast of a machine. So really think about what you're paying for, what you're getting, and what you're using before you drop down any money here. And don't let Apple confuse you with these 10th gen and 8th gen processors. These things are both relatively similar, but if you're looking for more power, you're going to want to get one of these two higher up models. So hopefully that helped. Of course, if you have any questions, I'm always down below in the comments trying to help you guys out. In my other videos, I'd get so much hate on the video with dislikes, but so many people in the comments asking, hey, this is my situation. Which one should I get? And, and I almost always reply to you guys, tell you guys what I think you should get. So if you want to hate on the video, that's cool. But I'm just here to help you guys make the best decision. So drop me a comment if you got a question. That's all I got for this one, guys. If you liked it, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.